morning, good evening, whatever time you're watching this. In today's video, we're gonna be replacing the rotors and pads on my 1991 Mazda Miata. So let's get to it. All right, so now that we got all of that out of the way, we got the spacer off. This kind of gives you a better look at what I was talking about in my first video about the car and what spacer I'm running. So yeah, we got the wheel and the spacer off. Obviously you need to remove the spacer if you're going to take off your rotors. And so I've got the new rotors and pads right here. And obviously these old rotors need a refresh. They are pretty bad. So that's what we're gonna be doing. I'll walk you guys through the process. We're gonna knock out the front and the rear on this side. And then I probably won't film the other side, but either way, I'm gonna teach you guys how to do a rotor and pad swap. So step one is going to be removing this caliper. So you have to undo right here and here, and then the caliper will disengage. And then there's still gonna be this bracket. Then you have to unbolt from the back this bracket and once you get this bracket off you're able to remove your old rotor and then from there we'll put the new rotor on put the bracket back on and then put our new pads on and so you want to do this all at the same time if you're replacing your rotors you can just replace your pads but i recommend doing your pads and rotors so you don't get what's called pad slap and these rotors are long overdue for a change so like i said we've got the new equipment right here so yeah let's get to it so getting this off i'm using an impact of the bottom bolt just because i don't want to spend time trying to break it loose next to the lower control arm you don't have to use an impact it still had grease on it which was awesome so i at least know that the front was maintained by the previous owner and you can kind of see there's some debris in that caliper which is kind of weird but right here i'm reminding you please do not impact off that top bolt you can see where the previous owner tried to or tried to put a wrench on it or something and uh, yeah, not a good idea because that does not thread out. That is just a sliding out piece. So I'm just gonna set this on the lower control arm and just keep that so that there's no tension on the brake line. And then just remove these retainer pins and remove these pads. And so it's as easy as that. Now we're left with the caliper bracket. So now I'm taking off the bracket right here. So super easy, just knock out the two bolts on the back. You can see I already started on one and then I started knocking out the top one. As you can see, my rotors already are kind of loose. So I didn't have to deal with um, knocking them out. If you do need to knock them out, you can see a small hole on the front of the rotor. That small hole is actually um, to help you get the rotor off if it is seized on there. And so uh, fortunately I didn't have to do that, but if you need to, you can thread a bolt on and it'll pop the rotor off. So pretty crazy difference between that and that. But yeah, definitely was due for it. I will be honest though, probably could have ran the pads longer, but you know, it's whatever. I'm excited to have better pads anyways and uh, better rotors, so. Yeah, now I'm just gonna clean this up with a wire brush uh, just slightly and then we'll throw everything back together. Just knocking off some of that debris and then I'm coming through with some high temp grease that was provided with the Hox pads and I'm just giving a light coat. I spread this out over the course of the hub. You don't have to go this heavy in one section, uh, just keep that in mind. And then slapping the new rotor on, it does have, you can see where my gloves kind of took off some of that special coating that comes with. So keep that in mind, that's what it looks like underneath the coating. But I'm just gonna spin on a lug nut right here, get it tightened down just so it's a lot easier to put the caliper bracket back on because it'll keep everything in place. So I would recommend doing that. Throwing back on this caliper bracket, it is just the reverse of what we just did. So throw on those two bolts, just screw on the bottom and screw on the top. And then we're gonna torque these down. I'm gonna pop up the torque spec for you guys so you can uh, use it as a reference. So after those are all torqued down, you're gonna grab your pads and you're gonna grab some of your high temp grease. You're gonna put a little bit on a brush. You can use any sort of brush. I just found this brush in the garage and so I used it for this application, but you can use a paintbrush or whatever you need uh, as long as it gets onto the pad. So I'm gonna do the two small sliding points on the ends of the pads. Uh, obviously you don't want to put it on the pad where it's going to connect to the rotor, but 
Uh, you do want to grease up those a little bit and then you can also grease up the back of the pad where the caliper will come in contact. And then you're gonna pop in your retainer clips. These are a little bit annoying, but once you get them in, it's kind of self-explanatory. These hold the brake pads away from the rotor. And so that way you're not just constantly rubbing. And next up, we're just gonna slide the caliper back on. So it's as easy as that. And we're going to grease up the bolt that we took out from the bottom of the caliper. I will say I have a little tool that I used from Amazon. It is a tool that presses the caliper piston back into place and it makes it a lot easier to slide, especially when you're installing brand new pads. And then we're gonna to torque it to spec. So I'll pop up the torque specs on screen and you can get a look at that just to make sure that you're doing everything right. So to give you guys some understanding of what I'm putting on the car, uh, I went with these Hawks Performance HP Plus pads. They're a very high performance brake pad. So I went with the Hawks pads and then these SP Performance rotors, which I think personally are looking pretty good. The process has been pretty simple. The finish is obviously not like that. Once you start driving, there is like a silver under this, but it's got a coating over it. Um, so that'll wear off over time. But then also, if you guys were paying attention, I've got some other parts right here, like inner tie rods, outer tie rods, bushings. And that is for another video. Basically, I've been chasing a clunk on the front end of this car. And I think I figured it out while I was doing this side of the front caliper. It turns out that I was missing a retainer clip for the caliper bracket. And so I think that's what was causing some sort of piston slap when I would kick my tire. And it would only happen like if I kicked it, I could hear something going on. And so that's what I think was causing it. Thought it was the inner tie rods, but I'm gonna put this all back together. I'm not gonna install those parts today. And hopefully that gets rid of the sound that I was chasing, but I'll keep you guys updated in later videos if that was what caused it. I'm hoping that's what it is because if it is, don't really have to install all of that right away. And I can kind of wait until um, I'm ready to take this car all the way apart and do some refreshing on everything. Cause that would be probably a better idea than trying to take the steering rack apart right now and then have to get an alignment and all that stuff. Just playing around with this in my head right now, trying to figure out what I want to do. But obviously today we were just doing the brakes and rotors. And then eventually I want to fully redo this car and uh, take it down to nothing and build it all the way back up, give it actually a nice coat of paint um, inside and out and do the car in my opinion, the right way, the perfect way and learn from all the mistakes that I've made on this car over the years from just having it as my first project car. And so eventually over here, this grass part is going to be a shop. Right now, obviously there's nothing there yet, but eventually there'll be a shop there. So then I'll have a lift and then that way I can pull a lot more stuff off the car faster and it'll be a lot easier to make content for you guys. So I'm really excited about that in the near future. And then yeah, I'll have a better place to do more informative videos. Cause honestly, it is really hard to try to show you guys how to do something. And I don't really feel comfortable showing you guys how to do stuff when I can't get the angles proper. Cause I know how frustrating it is when you're watching a video and you can't see what's going on. And so the videos will get better, I promise. This obviously isn't an excuse. I'm just letting you guys in on what's going on in my life and hopefully getting you guys excited for things to come. Cause that's when I think the best videos are gonna get made is when I have the space to do it. But for right now, we're stuck with the Miata in the backyard and the 350Z over there. And the 350Z, uh, I just ordered a motor for. And so that just got into the California port and it should be arriving to my house within the next week or so. So very excited about that. That will be getting a new motor soon and then we'll be drifting soon. So keep your eyes out for more 350Z content. It will be coming through the winter. So this will be my winter project but trying to get this done before winter strikes because uh, I want to drive this car more and drive it to work. So jumping into the rear pad install, one thing you're gonna to want to remember is to take off this little plastic uh, cover for the bolt that you're gonna to need to remove. And it's the same order operation as the front caliper. You're just gonna undo the bottom bolt then slide the caliper up and then slide it off. Once you've got the caliper off, you'll notice that there is still a bracket for the caliper, but you do not need to remove it to take off the rotor. So that's kind of nice. It saves you a little bit of an extra step. So anyways, I started cleaning up the hub with the wire brush, just like I did with the front. And it's the same process. You're gonna throw a little bit of high temp grease on there, and then you're gonna slap on your new rotors. After that, you're going to grease up the pads, make sure that you get the ends of the pad and the back part of the pad that is in contact with the caliper. You don't wanna to go too heavy on the grease, but not too light. The retainer clips on the rear are slightly different than the front. They are in a W shape. So you're gonna essentially press in one side to one hole of the pad and then wrap the W under the small metal pin that's sticking out. So once you've done that, there's a bolt next to the bracket for the e-brake. It should have a little copper washer on it. And under that, you're gonna have your 
caliper adjustment key for your e-brake. And this is gonna adjust the piston position when it comes to your caliper. And so you don't want to strip this out. You also wanna make sure your e-brake is down when you're doing this process or you will damage your caliper. So this is how Miata's work. You have to adjust the inside of this with an Allen key. And so that's what I'm doing right here. So just loosening it out, making sure that it backs out. And my calipers were a little bit seized up. Um, nothing really to worry about. I ended up using that tool, like I mentioned on the front, and uh, it was able to space it out, but it did take just a tiny bit of convincing. I slid the caliper back over the pads, reinstalled that bolt after giving it a little bit of grease, and threaded it back on. So once the caliper is back on, you will notice something. If you apply your e-brake, you can still rotate your brakes and so that is a big issue so you need to go back to that allen key that you adjusted outward and you need to start adjusting it inward until you can still rotate the rotor and the hub um, but when you apply the e-brake it no longer rotates and so just make sure you do that that is one extra step there's more detailed videos on that on youtube if you're really curious on how to get it perfect but i've done this process multiple times it's kind of just a feel thing you've got to kind of gauge exactly where it is and just get it close to perfect and then start working with half turns and you'll get it dialed in. And then once you're done with that, you just simply throw on that little plastic dust cover for that bolt and then that's it, it's all done. All right guys, so we finished up with the install for the most part, um, looks really good. I have my spacers back on right here. I'm going to actually finish this video after I've driven the car a little bit just to make sure that everything's buttoned up and let you guys know if I had any issues. But yeah, should be pretty good pretty excited about it and I'm gonna drive it to work and then probably do my outro at work so I can give you guys kind of a full review of how they feel and if I feel any noticeable difference to uh, let you guys know if this is something you should do to your car so that is basically it for today like I said I will cut to that review of driving the car to work and let you guys know my thoughts later in this video so get to there soon all right guys so it's been a couple days now with the brakes and as you can see <laughs> there is a ton of dust on my wheel and on the face of my wheel uh, and my lug nuts and everything it is caked in dust but you can see the new rotors right there they look super good and you've got the slotted piece now that looks amazing compared to what they used to look like i will say there is a ton of dust on these and i'm hoping that down the road it will dust less i think this is just because of the break-in period it is having a little bit more dust than normal but i'll keep you guys updated down the road if anything changes if i do really see a huge difference in wheel dust from my previous setup i will let you guys know because obviously that's something to take into account before you do a modification like this but from what i can tell this has been amazing it was super easy to install and it works much better i feel way more response from the brakes i've been driving the car back and forth to work now for about three days so it's gotten plenty of time to kind of seat in obviously i haven't done like full braking power yet but i'm sure that these are going to give me the braking power that i need when i am on the mountain or going to my local track days so yeah super excited about the mod i hope you guys enjoyed it hopefully it was a little bit informative for you guys i'll try to do more not necessarily how-to videos but kind of just explanation videos while i'm putting parts on my car sometimes i don't feel like i'm qualified enough to do a full how-to video on stuff so i'd rather just kind of show you guys my experience and give you guys kind of a step-by-step -step guide but not a full-on how-to by the book example so yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed the video stick around for more and i'll talk to you guys later peace